My heart fluttered a beat as James walked close to me, gently wrapping his arms around my form. I placed my hands on his shoulder, leaning close. You are an absolutely wonderful woman. I'm so happy that you let us stay here. I'm happy too, James. I stared at his eyes, getting lost in them. I didn't know if it was the tiredness or my growing attachment to him, but I found myself leaning into James's body. It invited me to stay a while, making me forget that my bed was also calling for me. Listen, about what happened at the warehouse. No, it's fine. You did what you had to do, I understand. I had accepted everything well in James's warmth. He was real. He was someone I didn't want to be without, even if I meant nodding against my curiosity. Besides, I was too tired to explore that memory further. James died before kissing my forehead sweetly. Come, let's get you to bed. I nodded before James gently lifted me up in his arms like a bride and carried me to my room. I didn't want to leave his arms, leaning my head against James's chest, but eventually I was slowly over to my bed and covered with my bed covers. I was still in my school clothes, but I was too tired to strip or care. I looked up to James, finding a yawn from escaping me as he gently ran a hand over my hair. Have sweet dreams. I'll prepare breakfast again for you in the morning. And yes, it was him. I nodded with a tired smile before watching him slowly stand and leave my room, closing the door. A wave of happiness washed over me as I laid in my bed. I made a good choice. She would be hard, but I could tell that I would be able to manage it. Help around the house. And being with a man who I was slowly starting to fall for would be worth it. I slowly felt my exhaustion take over. I let sleep consume me as I drifted into the darkness of my mind. Everything was peaceful. I was happy. <laughs> Till Diana entered you the situation again. Hi, sweetie. Creature. You always do keep coming back, don't you? So, we now cue Diana. I open my eyes to see a woman staring down at me with a very sly smirk on her face. I open my mouth to scream in fright, but the hand quickly covered my mouth. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. No screaming now. Too early, silly girl. I could only stare up at the woman above me. I still felt weak, not having the strength to move and fire off. What was going on? Why was she here? Why did she not knock? Why did she just come into my room? How does she know where I live? How does she know where the boys were? Hmm. Why do the boys like you? You're unique, yes. But that can't be all that you have going for you. Rage began to consume my call again after that one comment. This woman, however, she was she was making me mad. She must have known that she let another smirk grow in her face. Ooh, you're feisty. That could be why. How are things with you and Sajero? Before I could bite her hand in anger, she moved her hand from my lips, standing up and staring down at me from her place next to my bed. Seriously, did nobody notice her enter the mansion? Nobody at all? Not one single of the incubi? They can't sense her whatsoever, really? Really? And she's having trouble with their father? Really? Seems hard to bloody notice. Nice dress, by the way. I quickly sat up and glared daggers at the intruder. She was very beautiful, but I felt more anger than amusement. Amusement. Who the hell are you and why are you in my room? How did you get in? How did nobody notice you? How do you know where I live? The woman began to laugh, making the rage inside me increase. I wanted to punch her, but I waited for her answer. <laughs> How silly of me. I forgot that we demons are not well known of in your world. You can call me Diana, little human. Don't call me little. Diana, demon. Diana, demon. Dee Dee. Don't touch that button, Dee Dee. You're a demon. I am, but I'm much more than just an average demon. What do you mean? Silly girl, I'm a succubus. I've seen a sex demon before. I said it down in shock. A succubus, first an incubi, now a succubus. 
Great! I now met both genders of a sex demon. I must be dripping with sexual energy or something, seeing as they all seem to come to this goddamn house. Diana crossed her arms into her bosom and looked at my body. Well, you are pretty. You don't look that amused. A goody little two-shoes, aren't you? Yeah. I moved out and stood from the bed, still glaring at Diana's. Diana. Why are you here? Oh, I just wanted to see who my competition was. Competition? Can we do this in the morning? For the boys, of course. They don't belong here, and yet here they remain. I want to know why and remedy this little issue. Why? Well, I know why, but still. She goes way out of her way to fix things. This girl, sorry, this woman, because she's not a girl, she's a woman. This woman was seriously pissing me off. Issue, what issue? They wanted to stay here so they can. Silly, uneducated human. You don't understand the important roles these boys play in the Abyssal Plains. You keeping them here is practically imprisonment. Aha! Uh -huh. You say that when you know what their father is like. Huh. I'd win this argument. You have about ten seconds to leave. Or at least start using your manners. Is that a threat? <laughs> How cute. What are you going to do? Kill me? Um, no, I could always probably scream at the top of my lungs, wake up the boys, get them in here, and then have them deal with you, or... Yeah, why didn't this character scream or do something else? Is Diana, like, using her powers on her that she can't do these other things? So a pillow at Diana. I know it'd be pathetic, but you threw one at Damien. We were going to. And if I do, which is a stupid thing to tell a demon anyway... You barely have the strength to stand, little human. I can rip the rest of your energy out and knock you into a coma. You'll never be able to wake up again. Touch me and I'll throw my pillow at you! Enjoy every minute of it. My pillow? I felt my body freeze and heat up to an almost painful haze. My mind began to feel fuzzy as Diana stepped towards me and caressed my cheek. Grandfather, why could you not put a spell on me to protect me from demon magic too, as well as hellborn magic? But apparently he didn't think to do that. Now, you're going to listen to everything I say without any questions. Got it? But I've got many questions. I constantly yammer away. It'd be kind of hard. Because if this was me in this situation, I'd be constantly yapping away. I nodded. Good. I plan to bring the boys back to the Abyssal Plains. Why? So that I can take my place as queen of their realm. They have no reason to be here in this silly little world. So I'm going to make sure they return home. Okay, Pumpkin? Don't call me pumpkin. And also, you want to be queen. But now we know that there's somebody else out there that we know has feelings. It's so a spoilers for those who are not aware. And here I'm just thinking to myself, hello, what about said third party? Ugh. Also, why would she want to be queen? Wait, their realm? I thought it was the father's realm. And have you noticed what he does to a lot of his queens? They're not in the best positions at present. I nodded but growled my rage couldn't be concealed, despite the hold I was under. You evil! <laughs> Call me evil all you want, dearie. I'm not, not evil. evil. You're, You're just, just in, in my way. way. That is going to be my favourite quote for Diana. I felt Diana lean into my own whisper, making me unconsciously shiver in both pleasure and annoyance. Now, be a good little human and go to bed. I'll make sure they're gone before you get home tomorrow from school, 
So make sure to say goodbye in the morning. I felt my body move on its own to lay in bed and cover itself with my bed sheets. I glared at Diana the entire way down. Diana laughed at my futility. I'll get you! And your pretty dress too! Oh, please do. Well, I'll have to ask you where you got your dress from. All of a sudden, her voice deepened, became cold and demonic, sending a violent scared shiver down my spine. Her red eyes practically illuminated in the darkness of the room as she glared at me. Give me a reason to make your life a living hell. Wait till we go through your route, sweetie! I grunted my teeth, trying to fight back against the hold on me. She couldn't have been that tough. She needed energy to survive, right? I was sure she couldn't have had enough to hold me down forever. Diana then laughed and returned to normal. <laughs> oh, and make sure you don't tell the boys I was here. I want my visit to be a surprise. I felt the hold on me disappear, allowing me to set up and practically growl at Diana in rage. What's stopping me? Then you must not care about your friends and family as much as you care for the boys. Blackmailer! I stopped and stared. What did she mean by that? Was that a threat to my family? Diana looked at me, knowing the confusion behind my eyes. Let's just say that. If you tell the boys about me, I'll make sure that no one will care for you. And you'll be all alone in this little house until the day you die. Unless, of course, I said going to venture like, you know... Abroad or something, you can't really make me alone in my house forever. I mean, there's going to be like a postman or something coming to deliver mail. Just saying. 